Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Chung, Chief Medical Officer of the Joint Pediatric Enterprise between UT Southwestern and Children's Health. Welcome to this new segment of the In The Know video series. In these videos, I'll sit down with various physicians to shine a light on the clinical excellence, innovation, and medical advancements that are happening across our enterprise. I look very much forward to sharing this incredible work of our colleagues to transform pediatric healthcare in North Texas and beyond. We have with us today, Dr. Angela Price, who's an Associate Professor of Neurosurgery at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center and Children's Health. Dr. Price, welcome. Thank you for having me. Tell us about your um, program. The Neurosurgery Pediatric Program has had a number of changes over the past few years. My area in particular has had so much growth. There's been, my main focus is in epilepsy surgery and the amount of procedures and the types of procedures have changed dramatically over the last 10 years and in particular over the last five years. So we started doing laser ablation, which involves putting a tiny laser, minimally invasive, stereotactically located areas of the brain and I can do a biopsy at the same time, or I can turn the laser on and ablate certain lesions in this area. This arrived at Children's around 2014, and I seem to be doing more and more cases every year with that. We are now using it for both epilepsy as well as small tumors that are deeply located in the brain, and so far the results look really good. Uh, another procedure that we've brought in more recently is we purchased a robot for some of the epilepsy procedures I, have, I do. With epilepsy, often we'll know that the side of the brain the seizures are coming from, but we know, won't know the exact focus. And so a procedure we've been doing for an extended period of time is putting grids on the brain, which is great for locating surface lesions or doing mapping, but it's not great for locating lesions that are deep inside the brain. And so using the robot, I can stereotactically put multiple depth electrodes into multiple areas of the brain in order to isolate a foci that is responsible for a patient's seizures. Some of these patients were never candidates for surgery up until when we got ROSA, and we can now try to isolate and find the location of their seizures. So if you have a foci in an area of a brain that is either diffuse with a deep network that is causing the seizures, or you have a foci that's in an eloquent area that we can't ablate or an area that we can't resect, then I'll put an electrode inside of that and put it uh, connected to a device, a generator on the side of the head. And with that generator, it reads constant EEG and looks for spiking activity. And then in response to the spiking activity, it'll send a little electrode stimulus to that area of the brain and settle down the seizure foci. And the results in this seem to be a much better than any other palliative option currently. I wonder if you can talk to us about the, what it really takes from a hospital sort of commitment and support to be able to have such a unique and quite innovative program. So when you have a patient that has epilepsy, it, sometimes it can be managed by the family physician or a community neurologist. But then you start getting into the patients that have refractory to medicine epilepsy, and they need to be treated by an epileptologist who knows some of the up and coming drugs, who can prescribe the ketogenic diet, who can prescribe um, epidiolex. And so our team here at Children's is growing by the year. We are still adding epileptologists, and they are very, very busy evaluating all of these patients. So then you have a patient who has failed all of the other conservative treatments for epilepsy. Those patients then are admitted for an inpatient stay where they do a video EEG to determine if the epilepsy looks like it's going to be focal or generalized. And all of that is presented every Wednesday afternoon at a conference. We review all the results from every video EEG of every patient. We have every patient undergo neuropsychological testing. 
We have a lot of the patients undergo ophthalmology evaluation to understand where the visual fields are for when we plan our surgeries. So all of these tests are done on each of these patients. Sometimes they need a functional MRI. Spec scans are done, PET scans are done. And all of this information is then collated and presented at this epilepsy conference to see if we can find a focal area of where the seizures are coming from. But then you've got all these patients that we think it's here, it might be here, is it the whole thing, is this going to be palliative and not resective? And those are the ones that we weren't able to treat before. Those are the ones that now all this new energy and all this new um, concepts and innovation is going into. So once we do all of that presentation, then we decide what procedure we're going to do. It's all collated, comes back to the group, and then we decide whether I can resect or RNS or laser or whatever. Every patient, their care is tailored for that patient and no two patients are wow. the same. To be the surgeon who has this child that will come in that is having 80 seizures a day. So you have these parents who are focused on this child and that's pretty much all they're focused on when your child is having 80 seizures a day. You have a child who is not developing, a child who is two years old that they wheel in in the wagon, who doesn't look at you, who doesn't respond to you, who isn't talking and cannot feed themselves. That's really a challenge for these families. And to have that child go to surgery wake up and not have a single seizure after, it can change the child's life, the parent's life. It, it changes the whole dynamic. And to be a part of that is so fulfilling as a physician. I mean, it's just so inspiring. And think of just uh, imagining there's a group of kids out there with this devastating chronic condition, have really no sort mm -hmm. of a alternative better treatment, mm -hmm. and then with your program, they're actually being able to be treated and cured. Well, we're so grateful to you and your exceptional program and what you do for children and all the kids uh, in the community. Thank, Thank you, you very much.